Cerebral satire contains strong language and thoughts that may offend. If you are easily offended, don't fucking bother listening to it. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. To the Chris Experimenting with Sound episode of Cerebral Satire. I am one of your hosts, Chris. This is John. Say hello, John. Hey, how are you guys doing? <laughs> we are doing fantastic. Let's move on. John, how's your week going this week? Oh, it's pretty good. Oh, wait, I probably should say. John is subbing for Ant or Wayne this week and or whatever I whoever I choose to be on this podcast from now on because uh, I'm just here you you send me a link and I click on <laughs> exactly. it and all of a sudden we're making a podcast yeah you know? that's the way it works I send you some articles and then we have fun that's the way it works so, yeah I'm, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time because <laughs> my friends have lives and wives and mostly wives and kids one of them has kids the other one has a wife that he has to have an anniversary with and deal with on, on time to time the other one has kids that he has to deal with and or go out and have camping trips with that would be aunt the other one is a wife and or has a wife well technically i guess he is a wife because in fact he jerks himself off in the, the loneliness of space at his apartment or townhouse flat what would they call that i guess it's a house i'm i'm honestly not sure yeah, I'm I guess sure. it would be a house. I guess it would be a house for them. I don't think it would be a house for us, to be honest with you. I really don't think it would be a house for us. I think it would be I have more like literally a, no frame of reference. Uh, I think it would be more like a townhouse for us, as little as their houses are over in England. Yeah, I've never been. Yeah. And like, I, how, I all right, so you're a house I owner. How know. how big is your house, square foot wise? How big is your house? Oh. If you'd asked me this two years ago, I'd be able to rattle off the statistics right off. Come the top on, you're of a handyman. I think. It's seventy four hundred square feet. Seventy. But technically, we have a. Um, I'm sorry. No, it's it's fifty four hundred square feet. Gotcha. But we have a basement that is unfinished that one day is going to become livable space. That's going to be your so, bar downstairs. Uh, it's going to be my bar and my home theater and my prostitute murdering dungeon. Yes. <laughs> your what, what are they, your Dexter dungeon. Oh wait, uh, I wasn't supposed to tell you about that. Oh, that sorry, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Just edit, edit yeah, I'll edit that out. No, I don't. You know me, I don't edit shit. Um, yes, <laughs> we, we've already established this. Trying to get this started. Exactly, exactly. So I'm moving. You're moving from from where you are now, from yes. what I understand. Yes. To another place near. Buy in the state? Uh, or am I my I'm not leaving the state. I can say that. I'm not leaving the state. I am moving uh, closer to my sister. I'm moving to Green... Uh, sorry. Moving to Spartanburg, South Carolina oh, is what I'm moving. Oh, so I'm moving from Florence to Spartanburg. And I will tell the difference between Florence and Spartanburg. Florence, less humid, but hotter. Yeah, Spartanburg, Spartanburg is more yeah. humid, less hot. Living as I used to do in Augusta, Georgia, yeah. back in the oh, day. Oh, um, oh, hey, Spartanburg hey, is <laughs> close enough to that that in terms of you know uh, how their weather pattern usually works. That yeah, I, I couldn't recommend it, but you you do what you got to do. You know? <laughs> well, I'm moving to Spartanburg because uh, my job requires me to move. My new job requires me to move to Spartanburg, and two because it's closer to my sister. It's literally. 25 yeah. minutes from my door to her door we timed it oh that's good yeah i mean to being closer nephew. to family is always good but good to see the my, downside my is that brother-in-law the, the downside is that you're stuck living in south carolina which is basically the only state in the union that makes georgia look good i do not disagree with that because trey gowdy is a fucking cunt well <laughs> trey gowdy you know, again, for some of you that most of you that don't know is a representative of south carolina yeah, I, I, I don't really have a duck in that pond, but I would be forced <laughs> to. to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you really don't have a duck in that pond because you live in Georgia. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of like the whole John Ossoff thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Which, 
Yeah. Which I mean, is going everybody's on right now. losing their minds about yeah. whether or not uh, the 6th District of Georgia can flip from Republican, a traditional Republican, to uh, a Democratic win this time around. Yeah, because like, Purdue went on Trump's cabinet or something like that? Uh, it was uh, Tom Price. Price. Tom Pri- well, Price. I mean, Purdue, Purdue did as well, Price. but that wasn't his district. But yeah, um, Fuck, why do I know these people's names? These people's names are ridiculous. Well, They're so they stupid. Up in the news. I shouldn't know these. This is exactly what Trevor Noah was talking about. Why do I know this many people in the cabinet? I should not know that Linda McMahon is in the cabinet. I shouldn't know it. I should not know that. I shouldn't know that fucking Tom Price is in the goddamn cabinet of the United States. These people are horrific people, and I should not know their name. I should go back to being Bill Clinton age of of politics and not know who the fuck is running the government. Just know who the hell is in charge of the government. That's what it should go back to be. But these people are such cretins, John. They are such horrible human beings of existence that we have to know them because they have headlines of them every fucking five seconds on the fucking TV. Yeah, I, well, I by and large, I think calling them cretins is doing a disservice to actual cretins because <laughs> a lot of them are far worse. And I know that yeah. Trump, you know, it, it, it's been discussed and kind of around the edges of a lot of the political and, reports yeah. that um, he he stacked all of the cabinets with people designed to destroy those cabinets Pretty and administrations. Much. I mean, how else do you explain getting, you know, Betsy DeVos in as the, the education yeah. lady? When she wants to destroy getting, education um, as far as like, um, or, or getting what's his name in charge of the energy yeah, or the, the guy that's in charge of the EPA who is basically a climate Against change the, denier. Yeah, and uh, and works for the oil companies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, there's there's a lot of – the only good thing that's come out of this election – well, there, there's there's two good things – is that <laughs> – Please um, enlighten me. Um, people are way more active now and paying attention that's true. To, to politics in America. I, Instead of just assuming that everything is going to magically work, hence, people are paying attention yeah. to what's going on behind the scenes. Hence why and, we you know, know who the fuck is actually, you know, on the cabinet board and all that shit. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And the second good thing, at least for me, is that um, every time I post something about, you know, climate change or the mismanagement of Trump as a president or, you know, anything kind of in that realm, I get a lot of responses from people on Facebook that are very pro-Trump, and it's it's like wearing a sign that says "Don't ever interact with me again. I'm a moron." Wait a so minute. So I get to save a lot more. How time do you get a lot run. of interaction with people? You know, a lots of people that voted for Trump. Um, I know a couple of people who voted for Trump, and most of them regret it. Most of them, about a month after the election, after he started, you know, talking about what he was going to do as president were very vocal about, oh, my God, I've made a mistake. I'm so sorry. Did Georgia go to Trump? Uh, Georgia did go to Trump Georgia. by a very narrow margin. Yeah. Um, South Carolina was not a narrow margin. Not yeah. A, well, I mean, not that, that's not surprising. No. But, not a, uh, what but was surprising cheap, was how narrow the margin here? was in Georgia. It's cheap to live here. Oh, yeah. No, it's great. Um, South Carolina is very cheap living. When we lived in Augusta, we would uh, we'd hop the border and buy all of our cars up in South Carolina because, yeah. you know, everything was 10, 20% yeah. cheaper. Yeah. yeah. And liquor, buying. liquor's a lot cheaper here yeah, when you can get it because <laughs> they, they're very restrictive with their liquor laws. And, uh, and so. not they've loosened up. But yeah. They've loosened up quite a bit. Actually, it depends on the, ca- de- it depends on a County you live in for, for those of you abroad in the UK, we have, uh, s- towns, cities, counties states federal government that's about it right i think that's pretty much it that's pretty much it yeah yeah so in in that order how how you understand how that works with all the different laws that's going on wikipedia that's all i got for you because it's different from every state from every county from every um from every town (laughs) yeah it pretty much is um, i mean georgia decided to rescind uh, on a county by county i think basis whether or not to rescind the uh ban on selling alcohol on Saturday on Sundays. Oh, rescind and, it. Yeah, so some counties now sell alcohol on Sundays, some counties don't. Oh, you're um, like South Carolina then, now. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then uh, within within the counties that do allow alcohol sales on Sundays, some individual businesses have decided to remain on the fence of not serving alcohol on Sundays because I guess that's just the habit they've been in all these years. Oh, so yeah, it's uh, please get your religion out of my government. I fucking hate you. Well, yeah, that's that's a whole. But that's all it is, podcast, though. That's all. Right it's there. all it comes down to for the alcoholism for. Look. Alcoholism for the alcohol sales. That's all it comes down to. Is the religion? Yeah, I mean, that's it's all what it based off to. the old blue laws. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent blue laws. Oh, we must be going to the devil because we sell alcohol on Sunday. Oh, that's bad. Uh, most of you drink alcohol on Sunday. It's called fucking NASCAR. Yeah, you may not be able to buy it by the case at at fucking Food Line, but you can. But you football. can. Exactly, but you can go to the bar, your local fucking bar, and fucking get some alcohol and knock it back and be all okay with it. Yeah, there's a. It's funny because I was uh, I was reading on Facebook last night. It was a friend of mine from high school, you know, fifteen, twenty years ago at this point, who was very very Christian, um, at the time in high school. Like, oh, okay. So who he was, was he was buying Christian. people, you know, uh, study Bibles for their birthday to like, you know, give them religion. <laughs> Fuck you. If um, you bring a study Bible to my birthday, I will murder you. I will fucking but, uh, he murder is, you. He's since kind of gotten off that bandwagon and has gone like most people do into the exact opposite camp. So he was posting a bunch of stuff about how, um, it was something regarding church and state. And he posted about how, when he was in high school, he had written some kind of essay that was basically saying how America was founded as a Christian nation. Yeah. Hint, totally wasn't. No. Um, and that he got an A on it. And now looking back at it, as an, at it as an adult, he felt that he his teacher should have taken him aside and be like, look, son, this isn't how that works. Like, <laughs> and uh, That's you know, not how you, schooling works either. That's not how schooling works either, sadly. <laughs> exactly. like the, the, the best education I have... Uh, over the course of my life has come from yourself like organizations around school or yeah. people that I've met in school yeah. and not necessarily from school I itself agree. which kind of defeats the whole purpose of school but then you know what do I know I'm just a guy sitting in front of his computer hey um, what else is going on this week I mean I'm I'm literally just packing boxes I don't really have much to say I got a new job congratulations me yay close to my family congratulations yay I gotta move my so, I gotta move my shit. That's fucking sucks. You're uh, you're no longer with the toy factory. I am no longer with the toy factory. This yeah, this is news to me because yeah. I've 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 seen M posting some stuff, but she doesn't typically post a lot of your personal details. Correct. So, we so don't. Congratulations not, on uh, new job. Thank you. I appreciate that. We don't post a lot of new. We don't post a lot of stuff in general about our personal yeah. lives about on yeah. Facebooky, um, in general. But well, ne- I mean, neither do you, to be honest with you. Uh, mm. your significant other is the one that I normally have to keep up with you for. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look at Facebook all the time. I just, you know, I comment on stuff. I don't really feel the need. All, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I don't feel a compulsion to post stuff on my Facebook feed every single day. It's just, I, I understand like, that something interesting or I have something interesting happen to me. I'll share. Yeah. But, um, part of it is because every time I post, you know, I could, I could post something about how big a dump I took this morning and it will inevitably turn political <laughs> at this point. Like that's because Hillary is in your system and oh. you're shitting her out, you know? And I'm like, I don't need this. I don't, I don't need everything to be made political. You know? Oh, I wish, I wish you would post something about your morning dump and allow me to just jump on your Facebook page and make it about Hillary. <laughs> well, you know, if you, if you really want to discuss my morning dump, um, Today's was today's was a little intense, and, and I'm I'm having to sit funny. Really? Uh, Are you, you, yeah. you got a little you got a little skin poking? You got a little, uh, not necessarily. A little it's just, O-ring it's, poking it's, uh, out. I, I ate a lot of spicy food last night. So oh, so it's, it's more. It's a little tender. Yeah, more tender than uh, than uh, than than actual pokey out. We right. Um, so see, yeah, I, I mean, can, I'm glad that I can share my butthole stories here <laughs> instead of on Facebook. You know, it's a safer environment. It's smaller, more intimate. Well, I mean, we share this with everyone on our Facebook page, so I hope you enjoy all the people reacting to how your butthole feels today. Well, by the time it gets posted, my butthole hopefully will feel better, so, you know. God, I done. hope so. I, yeah, because that would not be... I nobody fucking wants. hope so. 
<laughs> Jesus no Christ. It's like six days from now. If your butthole's not feeling right in six days, something's seriously wrong. Send today. help. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Send fucking help. Jesus Christ. I'll, uh, I'll make sure to post on Facebook when you put it up to let people know. Yeah. Day on that. yeah. But uh, moving sucks, dude. Seriously, moving yeah, sucks. Yeah, moving is the worst. I told my wife when we moved into our the house that we're in now, which almost five years here, I was like, I'm never moving again. Like, we're going to die here. Like, you know, you're just going to have to bury me in the floorboards or something because moving sucks so bad. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I haven't hit the hard part yet. Like, I just rented the, the truck and the trolley to carry my fucking piece of shit car across state. And, um, that was $108 I didn't want to spend. Yeah. And then, you know, you think, you know, oh, can I fit everything in a 12 foot? No, I need a 14 foot. Uh, I need a 16 foot and you compare every fucking movie company, moving company yeah. in the goddamn yeah. world. It's just like five, by the way, by the way, budget, budget, you're a dick. I love fucking budget. I mean, not budget Penske Penske. You're fucking dickheads. $240 to fucking have a trailer for my car. Go fuck yourself. Go there fuck are, uh, yourself. That's more expensive than the goddamn car, than the goddamn sixteen foot moving van you're letting me take to the next, to the almost to the next state line. So you need to get one of those little smart cars, then you can just put the smart car inside the moving truck. Oh God, we were thinking about it too. We were thinking about. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We were thinking about uh, asking a friend of M's to he who he drives a motorcycle to drive his motorcycle over here help us load up which is going to help us load up no matter what and then we were going to put his motorcycle in the moving van Dr i was going to drive the moving van so we didn't have to fucking rent the hundred and i mean yeah it's only 70 i think it's like 73 dollars for the for the cart that i have to hook my car to but it's not bad like 73 bucks isn't bad that's it's about too bad that's about still. almost about as gas and mileage is worth pretty much like it's pretty yeah. equal, but two hundred and forty dollars from fucking U Haul? Go, I mean, from, from fucking Penske? Go fuck yourself, Penske. I think Penske does like uh, more commercial stuff. They're they're more like you know, if you're a business and you've got to move your entire office. I moved from, from Atlanta to, to fucking Augusta with Penske. It was fantastic. All of a sudden, Every they fucking a shot quote, up never fucking two hundred and forty dollars just for the moving van was one hundred twenty eight. The fucking trailer to cart my car was two hundred and forty nine dollars. Yeah, so that's that's a ridiculous. touch much. Yeah, and then better. you know, like luckily I I know I work at the toy factory, so I get to you know I got a bunch of boxes for free. That's nice, and that's always nice. I got tape and all kinds of stuff, but it's just a matter of like, do I really want? Why am I packing this? You yeah. know, you get to a point where you're like, why am I packing this? I haven't seen this in a year. Why am I fucking moving this goddamn fucking matrix fucking bullshit or this, this fucking Christmas bullshit mini lights? And like the did I iron my clothes this week? Why am I packing a fucking ironing board? Why? I, I don't understand. You know, yeah. you find shit in your house and you're just I don't want this. Just throw it out. Just I'd, I'd rather not move it. Just can we just throw this out? We throw all of everything out. Can I just buy all of new things when I get there? I mean, you really like to, but you, you kind of can't. So yeah, it gets pricey, especially if you're moving. I think before we bought the house, I moved something like five or six times in eight years. That's not bad. I moved, that's not I moved that's not time. off. That's an off base. That's pretty yeah. on. I mean, especially if you're in Atlanta. Like, I mean, Atlanta raises and lowers fucking rent if you're in apartments yeah. and stuff like that. Like, I mean, you could literally move and not want to move, but you have to move because your apartment complex went up a thousand dollars in rent. You yeah, know? you never yeah. know what's going to happen with them from from time to time. You know? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think most of the time that I've moved was because of either crime issues or because of uh, breakups, breakups or hookups. Ooh, hookups. Um, what? Well, Tell us the story. Not not hookups per se, but because I was moving <laughs> in with someone and I didn't have a big enough space. Like, you know, like uh, when when Kiri and I moved in together, I had to upgrade to a bigger apartment because I was in like a one bedroom. That makes sense. And, okay, yeah. that makes sense. But um, like, you know, you, you had to move because of her. Well, she the, the apartment that I had at the time would have been way too small for the two of us, plus her cats. And, Wait, um, how many cats is it? Chow cat. Uh, at the time, it was two. 
Um, now, now it's three. Oh my god! And like one of them's sitting on my hand right now because he's a douchebag. Why do you put up with this cat? Why? Why do you put up with this? He's a smart cat. He'll talk. I don't care. It's still it's a cat. Like I've. Uh, you I've, know what's what's weird is like I used to be a dog person and now I'm totally a cat person. What? Like, I fuck still like dogs. You. But you still you would if I said I will bring you two dogs and replace your three. I will take your three cats. Your three cats will be fine. Your three cats will be great. They'll be taken care of. They'll be take the every. They will be loved and cuddled and everything. You can but you can have these two dogs that are perfect for you. What would you take? I'd probably stick with cats. Fuck you. You would not. You know why? Why? Because I can go on vacation for five days and leave a pile of food out and the cats will be fine. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a valid. It's a valid point. It's a valid point. <laughs> valid point. Literally, I'm going through the same thing. I, I have to move. I'm moving. Right. We had a babysitter. Or fucking babysitter. We had a fucking dog sitter dog lined up. Yeah. Lined up for the beach and I'm, the the beach trip I'm about to go to. I'm about to go to, from the at the beach for an entire seven days. I'm gonna be at the beach for an entire seven days. We had a dog sitter light up. Obviously, we're moving, so now we don't have a dog sitter lined up. So now we're trying to find a dog sitter before we go to the beach. And if we don't find a dog sitter, the quarter of the family want us to board her, Chloe. And I said, no. I said, I don't want to board her. I, I would much rather take her. I will pay the $150 for the week to have her with me rather than board her because she's a fucking rescue and she's been boarded before and she's going to think she's Doesn't being well abandoned for seven days, yeah. you know, alone. Not to mention it's going to cost me more than $150 to board her for seven days. Right? Yeah, that's, a little, that's a little much. It is. It's going to cost me more than $150. So why would I not just bring her with me? She's a perfectly fine dog. She doesn't do anything. She doesn't bother anybody. All she wants is pets, walks, and eats. That's it. Every once in a while, she wants to be played with. I mean, literally, she's the best dog on the planet that I've ever seen or ever had in my entire life. I'm not exaggerating. Everyone thinks I'm exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. Even my brother pets a dog, and he fucking hates dogs. So yeah, when you get a good dog, you can tell. Yeah. Yeah. I have a great dog, and I knew taking her to the beach would not be an awesome experience for me or... M or anybody else i get it like i get it i understand it's a dog you got to look after her you got to watch her i understand that but here's the thing i don't want just anyone watching my dog like <laughs> i want someone i know watching my dog or someone that m knows watching her dog so Damn. being a uh you know a week and a half into being into the new place we're not gonna find someone that we trust to be in our a our apartment with all of our shit and C and B, the fucking watching our dog and making sure she's taken care of. So we're gonna take her fucking with us. But no, that makes sense. all of my family, well, most of my family is like border, 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 border. Fuck you! I'm not gonna border. Why would I border? Like yeah, I'll just take her with me. She's gonna be fine. I don't know. I don't know. They were all like, "You're gonna be worried about her the whole time if you, you know, you take her with you. You have to worry about it. You have to walk her. You have to." Yeah, I get that, but that's the responsibility I took when I, when you know, when I rescued her. You have to do it home. Yes, so. exactly. It's just the daily routine yeah. at this point. Fuck, it gets me exercise. I'm fat enough as it is. <laughs> fucking hell. I wouldn't know anything about that. Yeah, because you're a fucking fat cat person. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are the two related? Like, can't I just be fat? <laughs> To, and or uh, a cat person? Dog like, <laughs> dog dog owners get twenty two percent more exercise than cat owners. Now, see, that's one of the reasons why we didn't uh we didn't get a dog, because at the time we were living in apartments, it was harder to keep a dog on like different work schedules or kinda of all over the map when it came to our timing for being yeah. home to take out a dog and walk the dog and feed the dog. So it's a lot cats were just easier for apartment living and then when we moved into the house it was like well if we get a dog how are they going to deal with cats one of yep. them was kind of sickly at the time and you know we just kind of ended up sticking with cats one of these days we might get a dog but I know, doubt at it. the moment it's all cats yeah. and we've got enough cats we those cats live for fucking ever. yeah yeah fucking live ever which i'm okay with most of the time fuck that These, the three we've got are pretty well behaved so i don't know well, if you guys want to tell us about uh, your cat or dog or ferret or bird, birds are creepy, 
uh, or any of the any other pet Parents experience. It's a uh, hashtag C satire at Cerebus satire on Twitter or Cerebus satire at gmail dot com um, or Cerebus satire slash Facebook dot com. I think it is something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Join us, rate us, whatever you like. We're going to go into the first story, John. Let's please do that. Here we I'm go. Tired of talking about cats and politics. <laughs> It's not a good. It's not a good combination. It's my podcast. I can talk about whatever the fuck I this want. Is, this is true, but don't do it. <laughs> All right, here we go. I forgot how old David Lee Roth was during this fucking video. Jesus Christ, he's old. Well, Johnny, yeah. guy catches a thief in his home and punishes him with a brutal forehead motherfucking tattoo. This is from Unilad.co.uk, son. This is a disturbing moment, and teenager thief was caught and punished in a tattoo artist home in Brazil. First of all, who the fuck is robbing a tattoo artist? Who's robbing a tattoo well, artist? I suspect that given how chumpy this guy looks the the thief uh, he probably had no idea who he was robbing he probably just broke down the door and was like i'm, I'm gonna do this place because it's it's here in front of me and it's easy uh, and i'm lazy i mean he he looks like a fucking pussy this this thief looks like a fucking teenage pussy follow the link guys uh and this tattoo artist you don't really see him, but you see his both of his arms. You see enough of him. <laughs> you, just, you can tell he's a big fucking dude. Like you can tell this is a yoked motherfucker. Yeah, it might have been done some prison time. Um, though little is known about the video, which is posted to Best Gore, the tattoo artist caught by the boy allegedly trying to steal uh, before tattooing his forehead with lengthy Portuguese message reading "Isso ladrado e vacano." It. Unfortunately, there aren't any Portuguese speakers in our office, so translating the message, which is now permanently branded on the boy's head, has been a um, tricky task. Uh, uh, essentially, it translates to I'm a thief. However, what, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, other sources claim it to means avoid me, and some others believe it means to be a loser. The only things to be sure right now is that I'm sure glad that I'm not on that's not on my forehead. It's no secret that the level of violent crime in Brazil is increase increasingly high when there's being 30 to 35 minute 30 to 35 murders for every 100,000 people. Holy fucking shit. Are you kidding me? That's, um, yeah, that's pretty high. That's really high. That's not even Chicago high. That's that's above RoboCop high. Oh my god. That's like that's that's above fictional RoboCop Detroit high. Holy that's how high. Fucking it's. hell, that's high. Uh, people placing it in the top twenty countries for a homicide. Brazil's level of crime has led to numerous people and communities policing themselves and dishing out horrific punishments on anybody who is caught in the wrong. Although the teenager in the above video is clearly in the wrong, I don't think it takes a genius to figure out that a forehead <laughs> tattoo is. Absolutely not okay thing to do to anyone, let alone a young kid. Everybody makes stupid mistakes, and some eventually stupider than others, but to be permanently branded for life such as a young age just seems incredibly barbaric. I disagree with this. I disagree with the Unilad guy. I do. Yeah, I I disagree. Probably not as strongly as you disagree, okay. but I, I disagree as well. Why is that? Um, well, because tattoos are permanent, and especially in a prominent place like your forehead or face, it's not easy to get that taken off. Um, I mean, expensive expensiveness of the procedure aside, it's because uh, I know people who have had tattoos removed and or altered. Oh, have you? And it is uh, it is an expensive process. I'm interested and in talking about that because I I'm trying to look at my tattoos now. I don't think I'd remove any. I think I I definitely do an add on to some of them. 
and a cover yeah. up maybe to some of them, but not a not. I don't think I would remove any of them. Yeah, well, I mean, they're mean. One guy I knew had uh, his wife's name tattooed over his pack, and then he got divorced and remarried, so he had <laughs> to uh, you know change that up. But um, one of the one, one of the main removed, rules about tattooing remade. is you never put a woman's name on you. Like you don't ever Which put is, a lover's or a woman's or a wife or anybody's name on you. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any tattoos at the moment. Yeah, you're like aunt. You're a pussy. I mean, you're a dude well, that doesn't have any tattoos. <laughs> I'm. 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 I'm not gonna lie. I'm a white bread guy. You're pretty but, white. Uh, here's my thing. Like okay. I'm. I'm. I'm such a white bread vanilla guy. If I were to get a tattoo right now, people would look at me and they would think, "Oh, midlife crisis prop, plot loss." Like you're. You're losing the thread. You just need to do something exciting because you feel old and fat and miserable. I don't know if they would look at that like that. I think if you had bought the like the 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 classic fucking like Camaro Corvette or you know along uh, with the yeah, tattoos, well, uh, I get that. Like I that's understand a bigger indicator, together. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I get that together. But the just a one tattoo, like what would tattoo? What would be a tattoo that you would get? Well, well, see, here's my plan. I'm going to wait until I get my first Social Security check at the age of 65 to get my first <laughs> tattoo. Because if I'm 65 and getting a tattoo, that's way more badass than being 40 and getting a tattoo. Okay, so I'll give you an example. My uncle is 64, 63, 66, something like that. He's around. 60 ish. He's retired. Okay. So he's retirement age. Whatever that is in your country, just imagine your uncle being that old. My uncle is retired. My, uh, I haven't really talked about it a lot, but um, he got a tattoo of a loved one that had passed away. How about that? That's, Which, that's all that, I, I that's a, That's a good tattoo to get. I that's think. the only tattoo he's ever had. Ever. Ever. And, and he so was like a... a or is like his name? It's or just, no, name? It's, it's, it's more like a meaning... It's more like a stars and it's a meaning thing. It's not, not a oh, portrait, okay. not a name or anything like that. Just a meaning. Gotcha. Just a meaning. Just like, you know, a visual representation. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's class, you know, it's not like I don't really, I'm not a big fan of portraits as a tattoo person. I'm not a big fan of portraits. I'm a big fan of sleeves. I like, I like, I can't wait. Yeah. Oh God. They can go wrong very easily. <laughs> oh my God. Especially if you get old and. Fucking, you get a tattoo yep. on your stomach, and then your stomach ends up looking like ours. It's fucking horrible, you know. Well, the yours. person like becomes. I think you're a little ahead of me. Like, let's oh. not let's not throw stones. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it could go wrong very, very, very quickly. You know, you get the tattoo of your favorite kid on your arm, and all of a sudden it looks like a fucking, you know, a frog. All of a <laughs> in yep. in five yep. and a half years, because you decide to eat pizzas like me. You know. Yeah, your, your your bulldog tattoo turns into fucking Jab of the Hunt. <laughs> exactly. like, yeah, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. So, so yeah. So I mean, I, there's those, and then there's the ones that you know get it early, get it young, or um, get yeah. the ones that mark a time in your life. Like you know, let's just say my sister. My sister has a um, a rowing tattoo that she got with a couple of her rowing friends. I think that's a really yeah. cool thing. You know, I got a tattoo with a friend of mine to commemorate a uh, child of hers which I think is cool. Yeah, uh, you no, know, it's just cool. things like that. I think, uh, you know, are immediate and need to be done, but tattooing a mistake that you made when you're a teenager, uh, I think is a bit too far. I just think it is a bit too far. It's, yeah. it's a lot for it's, a kid, a, you know, it's a touch. Yeah. He ain't got no money. He's looking at his friends to, you know, to, for example, to how to get money quick. And he decides to rob a tattoo artist, which, I guess he's dumb enough to not believe most tattoo artists aren't big fucking dudes because they are. Unless uh, you're like I, fucking yeah, Kat Von D. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think I still think that he just he he got the bad luck of the draw. Like he kicked in a door that turned out to be owned by a tattoo artist. <laughs> yeah. You know, it could have been worse. He could have kicked in the door and it could have been owned like a drug lord or something, and he could have gotten his ass shot up. So uh, forehead true. tattoo I versus that. getting your ass shot I didn't up. Think about that. I'll take the forehead tattoo. I didn't think but about that. Yeah, it's it's still a, it's still a little harsh. <laughs> it's pretty harsh, man. It's it's yeah. it's pretty harsh, and I think there's other ways to do it. Like, what's a less permanent way to showing that someone's a thief? Chopping off their hand? <laughs> um, no, 
actually, in fact, I think that's that's even more permanent. <laughs> but, I mean, unless you you caught the hand and put it on ice right away and like stitched it back on, but then you'd have like you know fucked up weird hands. Maybe that's what life. they should do it's in the Middle permanent. East instead of just chopping off hands for thieves. Maybe they should chop them off and then put them back on. And, and then, then you'd have. I mean, it. you literally would have that scar for the rest of your life, so you know that oh, he yeah. was a thief. Yeah. And if you're lucky, you'd retain maybe fifty to seventy percent textile <laughs> use of the hand. Amidst the Middle East, I don't think you, I don't think you're in the seventy percentile up there. Buddy. Yeah, that's 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 kind of more like you, you're lucky to have a stump, something at the end of the stump. Yeah, exactly. You're lucky. Well, I you mean, don't I don't have... know. Like if they classed it up, where it was like you know they they wheel you into a plastic surgery place, and they're like, okay, we're going to remove your hand now, Mister Thief, and they chop it off, and then like they wheel you into the next room and they reattach it. You know, I mean, you on the head okay. So, what's a better what's a what's out. a better thing? Do you think it should be like a like a maybe like a bear like a tag for an animal? Like they tag should, your I, ear like a like an earring, but it, it says like thief on that. it or something I'm like good that. With neck collars, you get color coded yeah. neck collars, yeah. you know, and it says you know you know like uh, you're thief, purple, murderer, so you're rapist, rapist. You're red, you murdered like eight guys, like you know, and and. You can give people, you know, like, so if you're, if you're somebody who's been raped by somebody else, you get the little remote control for the buzzer. If the guy comes within 50 yards of you and he's not supposed to, you get to, you know, shop it, shock his little electric collar. <laughs> so you can, you can punk his rapist ass for coming close to you and violating whatever, you know, agreement they have with the court when they're released from prison from being a punk ass rapist. <laughs> there you go. I like it. I like that. That's not bad. That's not bad. If, 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 and then the if you try to remove it, if people. you try to remove it, it explodes like the like the fucking running uh, man, right? Yeah, that that well, <laughs> not that I'm exposed to, not that I'm opposed to rapists exploding. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, or, especially or, if they've had their fair day in court or, or and pedophiles, are rapists. <laughs> you know, but uh, for the same reason that I don't run down people that need to be run down with my car, it's a oh. lot of work to clean that up. There's a lot you know, of people that need to be run over with my car. That's that's a lot of hosing chunks of people off the sidewalk, you know. Ugh. That's that's upholstery bills. That's laundry bills. It gets messy. I mean, you you do live in you know you do live near the original site for the KKK, Kennesaw, Georgia. I'm just saying. This is this is true. Okay, fun story, personal personal story. Yeah, go ahead. I was born um, the same day that the Son of Sam killer was caught in New York City. How convenient for you. I know, right? Um, two years later, my parents moved us out of the city and into the suburbs of New York. And within a week of us moving, and I was like, you know, a toddler at the time, so I have zero memory of this. Within a week of us moving, David Berkowitz, the son of Sam Killer, was moved to a psychiatric facility about a mile and a half from where we ended up moving to in the suburbs. So, like, I have this weird connection with the son of sam killer make of that what you will how well did you do with our test last episode which which oh i haven't gotten it yet i'm i'm oh. four episodes behind sorry i should have i should have let you know about that up front because <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I did a lot of there's a psychopath test we do uh, uh the I'm, last I'm sure episode, i'm way up high on okay all right just checking I'm, just checking no doubt <laughs> I have to go take that out. So we're saying collars for criminals, right? Colored collars for criminals. Yeah, you know, or, or some like kind it. of uh, identifying thing yeah. where you know. I'm saying I'm, fuck, fuck a, fuck a registry. I'm saying colored com collars for criminals, and then if yeah, they, because the registry is you got to stop what you're doing yeah, and look it up. Yeah. Whereas yeah. a color coding collar system is very easy to do like oh, okay yeah. well you're wearing a red collar so i know you're you red for something. murder yellow for theft purple yeah, for yeah. pedophile can, yeah. you know green for green activist that as an asshole uh, <laughs> for social know. justice warrior yeah green for social justice warrior that's you, gone you too say far social justice warrior like it's a bad thing it is a bad thing uh, like anything else taken to extreme correct is no right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. Social justice warrior protesting, fine. Social justice warrior that decides to fucking uh, smash a window out in a Starbucks, not okay. Yeah, that's not a social justice warrior. That's an anarchist. Yeah, it's an anarchist. Uh, they're, All they're right. Well, war, let's move on to lot. let's move on to a fucking uh, cunt bag. How about that? Mm. <laughs> All right. Here we go. You, you had to ask me that while I got like a mouthful of whiskey <laughs> exactly. in my mouth. Good job. <laughs> here we go. 
When you try your best but you don't succeed When you get what you want but not what you need When you feel so tired but you can't sleep Stuck in Come streaming down your face When you lose something you can't replace When you love someone but it goes to waste Could it be worse? He wrote that oh, about man. Gwyneth, right? I mean, he had to have, right? I, I, I think so. He yeah. had to have because she's fucking insane. Because she's fucking crazy. She's, she is nutty. Crazy. She even admitted on fucking Jimmy Kimmel she has no idea what the fuck that her fucking face, her fucking website is talking about. She admitted on fucking Jimmy Kimmel that she has no idea what she's selling on her website. She just makes yeah, it up. She um, admitted it. She's a special snowflake. Yeah. She thinks we're all going to die from toxins. John. We're all going to die from toxins? Are you kidding me? I don't know if you heard that. We just got a really loud blast of thunder over here. <laughs> no, I didn't hear that. <laughs> no, it was nice. It was well-timed. It punctuated like your whole, like, she's going to die. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Go ahead. <clears throat> Go ahead. You, you got something to say or no? No, not yet. I. She's... <sighs> I'm trying to think of something that I can say about her that hasn't already been said okay. by other people. Are you ready? You ready for this? Better, this is, this is but... a statement from Gwyneth, <laughs> Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow. Spray sunscreens are bad news bears as you're sending nanoparticles of toxins into the air, which can then be inhaled. Mm-hmm. It's one of those statements that's technically true, but not Right. You know what I mean? Explain. <laughs> well, it's it's like, yes, you're technically misting stuff in the air that you shouldn't inhale, but duh, like, yeah, you shouldn't inhale suntan lotion because it's not edible. Like, and there's stuff in suntan lotions that you, you shouldn't eat because it's poisonous. Okay. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> yeah it's like it's like saying like don't walk into the wall because the wall will hurt you because yeah. it's solid and you yeah. can't pass through yeah, it. yeah. It's like, but, well, but uh. the government has a long very long fda incredibly stringent stringent testing policy to place to avoid possible toxic products from making their way into everything from your lips to your lips Things like personal lube and tampons are classified as medical devices and thorough through a I'm, I've been drinking through a battery of tests to make sure they're not toxic for intended use in your reproductive system. Similarly, cosmetics are subject to inspection for a number of things, including pro, uh, prohibited ingredients, m- micro microbial contamination, safety, and health risks. Yeah. There's nothing you're going to inhale from fucking sunscreen that's going to hurt you. Well, okay, better example. You know how um, apples have a tiny amount of cyanide in them? Yes. Yes. So technically, they're poisonous, but you'd have yeah. to eat like a million of yeah. them before yeah, you yeah, had yeah. If you ate one that's from every second for the rest of your life, you might die. So, like, if you drank a whole bunch of suntan lotion... Yes, exactly. It's not good for you. You don't no. want to do that. But your body will reject the bad things and keep the good things. That's the way your body works. That's the way it works. It pisses and yeah. shits. Hence, toxic things go out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I like, it's 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 weird because I, I empathize with her a little bit. Like, I'm... I, I understand what she's trying to do and say, but she's doing it so wrong, so so incredibly incorrectly that it's like 
You're just making it worse, honey. Sit down. Go away. <laughs> well, here's another one. Sadly, most people use their yawny as a psychic trash bin storing old or negative energy. That's that's their oh, pussy. That's their pussy. Yoni. yoni. Oh, yoni it is? Is that what it is? I think, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. 100% yeah. sure. But. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, scientists scientists specifically say do not put a fucking thousand year old egg in your vagina. Don't do it. It will hurt you and kill you. Do not put weird stuff in your vagina. Do not. Do, it's a very bad idea. On the other hand, if you have, you know, something that uh, has been rigorously tested and approved by the Vagina Association, by all means, have fun. <laughs> Here's a quote. We are, we here at Goop are unabashed proponents of good, clean, sexy sex. Oil-based per, uh, personal lube is super luxurious with aromatherapy benefits, natural moisturizers, and substance scents made entirely of certified organic ingredients, fractionated co coconut oil, sunflower seed oil, even evening pr primrose oil and gmo free vitamin e and without fragrance petrochemicals and other toxin ingredients you find in con conventional lubricants ky you can use this lightweight oil on your body too it's great for all skin types including sensitive yeah there's <laughs> oh. Con your regular old condom complemented liquid based lube has been thoroughly, thoroughly tested to prove that it's not toxic, as Gwyneth claims. Lubricants go through rounds of examination, including testing on siliconics, si si psychon, god damn it, psychon toxicity, micro limits, Viscosity, systemic tosity, and vaginal irritation. You're in the mood for love now, I'm sure. To prove that they're safe, to get to market. There is a hundred different tests they have to do to make sure that fucking lubes are okay to go to market. And if the one that you tried is not okay, I'm sure there's one that is okay. Yeah, there's there's enough of them out there at this point that uh, you should you should be able to find something that works for you, I think. I'd, I'd hope. Uh, I would hope I, so, considering the fact I do say, like, there's I, a whole aisle dedicated to, to it. Website. I want everyone to look at this website because the, the graphic design on it is amazing. Like, I'm, all the little pop-up Gwyneth Paltrow heads are, are yep. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow the follow website, guys. Definitely uh, look at the link. Link below. Of you. Yeah. She wants you to spend all your money maintaining your physique. Like most successful experts, Paltrow earned her body through means... That any of her Instagram followers can emulate going to the gym three times a week and watching her calorie ca caloric intake responsibly. Wait, I'm sorry. I blacked out there for a moment. I actually cost upwards of $30,000 per year to get Gwyneth Paltrow's body. That's a cost of a complete training package with her trainer. Come business. Her. <laughs> this is a quote. Her trainer training package with her trainer come business partner, Tracy Anderson. Anderson and Paltrow were brought together by fate. The actress first sought out her services in 2006 after the birth of her son, which she was 35 pounds overweight. <gasps> 35 pounds. Oh, my God. And had a long uh, butt and problem sure thighs. People following, she had like a crowd following around, just throwing stones at her oh and calling her. Oh my god, yes, yeah, she was awful. She was horrible. Her life is a hell. Here's some of the quotes from both of them while they're exercising. Women will bulk up, will bulk up if they lift more than three pounds. Did you know that? What? Yeah, women will bulk up if they if they lift more bulk than three up, pounds. Okay, are they saying bulk up with muscle or bulk up with bulk? Like, bulk up with muscle, weight. muscle, muscle. Okay, yeah, that's that's yeah. Um, your kid weighs more than three yeah. pounds. That's the thing no. you pick up the most, right, Gwyneth? Or you not touch your kid? You not you don't touch if your you kid? Put a bunch of food on a plate. That's three pounds. <laughs> exactly. right 
<laughs> Normal cardio activities like running and cycling give you a bulky deterior di- de- de- I'm, I'm derriere. Just Sorry, fucking hell. Derriere. No, I've never seen amazing. that word out loud. I've never seen that word out loud. Oh yeah. Give you Fair a bulky enough. derriere. As in other words, cardio gives you a fat butt. That is kind of the exact opposite of what cardio. That's exactly does. opposite of what cardio does. Adults should eat baby food as part of a balanced diet. Uh, if part of your balanced diet means throwing up every other hour, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Skin if it's can... part of your binge and purge system, like go for it, right? Skin can be pulled tighter to the muscle. <laughs> if you grab all the skin underneath and pull it really tight against that one side of your arm, like yeah, sure, why not? Eating baby food, this is a quote, eating baby food can eliminate toxicity, break bad habits, but still have your digestive system going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there there are people that I come across in life, and I have to honestly wonder why they just don't spontaneously combust from how stupid they are. Yeah, like they should yep. burst into flames because the stuff that comes out of their mouths is like it's just it's so inane that their their brain should explode and set them on fire. Here's the last quote from uh, Miss Gwyneth: Raw goat's milk can draw parasites. Out of you, raw. Like going goats through milk. you first, maybe. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Also, exactly. goat's milk. Mm. Uh, gross. She doesn't I'm care if she's like wrong. Milk, By all accounts, Gwyneth Paltrow is generally a nice person, but this isn't about if she's nice or not. This is about the fact that she's dispensing bad and potential dangerous advice. Her counsel is aimed at people who can afford to shop at Goop. The business is good for now. She said she can't pretend to be someone who makes 25000 per year and that she's a parent in her suggestions for mineral sunscreen and vaginal eggs in a country where some people can't afford access to proper um, g- gynecological care. Oh, I nailed that one. Yes. Yeah, that, it that is, wasn't rocky at all. <laughs> it is worth pointing out that that's an embarrassment of Quill's manage, manage de la Branque portions that there is 4,000 person waiting list for a $66, pussy, $66 pussy rocks because of an actress said, this is a thing we're doing now. I <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just... I, literally have nothing to add that that hasn't already been said a hundred times better by somebody else along yeah. the lines of yeah. how crazy this lady be yeah in a recent interview paltrow said when i find something that works i like to share it with people apparently that's very little concern for those with whom she is sharing your health deserves better from the outline.com yeah, yeah the, the your health deserves better than to follow any of her suggestions yeah. ever. Yeah. Do not, like, do not do anything that we have said this afternoon because we're not doctors and neither the fuck is she. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like she's one of those people who has, you know, like the, the you remember the Dave Chappelle sketch about uh, Prince uh, from Charlie Murphy stories? Yes, 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 yes. yes. And and Kevin Mur- or Kevin Murphy, Kevin Smith did uh, you know Princes Living in Prince Land? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Gwyneth Paltrow is one of those people who is living in Gwyneth, Gwyneth know, Land. Just, they're 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 in this bubble that is so thick now mm-hmm. and so impervious to push back that they just kind of do whatever they want. And in Gwyneth Paltrow's case, it's like, okay, cool. You know, you're, you're kind of a bubblehead. You're going to be over here. You're not going to get in anyone's face, whatever. You're just doing your, your thing. And, you know, you're advocating for kind of wacky stuff, but hopefully people will see that you're just kind of like your crazy aunt and kind of pat you on your head and leave you alone. Well, I mean, do you know why, do you know why she wasn't in civil war? The Marvel movie as, as pepper pots. And they went through the line of them breaking up or them not being together anymore. Yeah, I, I had read that because she got on this anti-violence kick and no longer wanted to do any movies where, you know, violence was a central theme, 
It uh, wasn't like necessarily an anti-violence kick. It, it it was more or less an anti. I don't believe in where this is going. Blah blah blah. This doesn't make sense to me. Blah blah blah. And like <laughs> the producers are like, it's just a movie. It's not yeah. real. Like it's fiction. Yeah. Like people are not really flying around in suits of armor right now, currently to save the world. And you're just a chick running a company. Can you just show up for a couple of days of shooting, please? And yeah. no, it was, like, it was like it was like double double my on. price, and I'll show up and I'll be in this. And no, mm-mm-mm. yeah, it's Disney and Marvel. Do you think they're gonna do- <laughs> fuck you? Yeah. Fucking well, Disney and Marvel. For, like, an ancillary character that can exactly. kind of be replaced with about. any <laughs> any well, strawberry just... blonde we can die well it's not even a matter of like replacing the actress or replacing the character like at, at this point in the narrative for the marvel universe you don't Pepper matter Potts, you know there, there's not really a reason for her to be on screen exactly. unless she's being kidnapped or, yes. or doing something to like kind of push around tony stark's yeah. thinking the persona or, or something or, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and there's no other reason, you know, there's plenty of other reasons that are given in the movies right now for Tony Stark to be acting the way he is yeah. than, you know, yeah. oh, my girlfriend's not here. Exactly. So or even, you know, they, they don't even have to break up. You know, all he has to say is do the throwaway line of like, you know, oh, where's Pepper? Oh, she's taking a vacation. Let's go fight this bad guy. Exactly. <laughs> like, so, you know, and and that's sad because I, I would certainly like to see I, that's one of the things that I like about all the Marvel movies is that they throw these small characters in there and they bring the small characters back and they make mm-hmm. the small characters yeah. necessary yeah, yeah, yeah. narrative. Oh, especially or, in or civil least, war when they were, when they're the bad guy, oh, yeah. it's just a regular yeah. guy. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that, you know, the, the Marvel universe is doing a whole lot better. One of the many things that the Marvel universe is doing a whole lot better than the DC universe. But you know, I, I, it's it's kind of like what uh, what happened with um well maybe not totally similar but somewhat similar to what happened with Margot Kidder and the Superman movies back in the 80s yes where um you know for for one movie they basically put, they sent Lois Lane on vacation so she showed up because she was contractually obligated to yep. show up yep in the beginning and the end saying like I'm going on vacation see ya and then like I'm back from vacation what happened while I was away so you know, there, there are ways around that. It's it's not essential. I mean, I'm sad that I'm I'm less sad that Pepper Potts as a character isn't involved in the storyline than I am sad about how Gwyneth Paltrow being a crazy person is preventing her from being a part of this whole thing that's going on with Marvel and and how well they're pulling a giant universe together. I agree because like. As an actor, all the people who are involved with that are so psyched about it. Like, you read any of their statements or, or look at and any interview yeah. they've ever done. Like, all and the Marvel like, people oh, are like, this man. is so cool. I'm inside the Marvel Universe. Everything is great. <laughs> and then you got her over on the side going, like, put this thing up your, up your cooch and everything will be fine. Look, like, I don't understand this. This that's, is stupid. Like, do you, do you not get that you're in a superhero movie and that's super cool? Like, yeah. come, come back over here. She's done too, man. She's not in. I'm looking up her IMDb. She's not in anything past Iron Man 3. She's done. Yeah, no, no, she's checked out. Yeah. Um, but again, like the reason I thought I she she went on this whole anti violence kick, and that was why some of her stuff in um, Iron Man three got rewritten. And at the end, she's like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I did that. That was so violent." Like, yeah, like I I understand if you're making Pulp Fiction, making a statement about violence like that. <laughs> But when you're doing like a superhero movie that's very fantasy, yeah, violence, literally, you like, just hold your hand out and they make things shoot out of your hand. Yeah, it's it's I'm sad. You know, there's always going to be that that person who's completely divorced from reality who it's thinks like sad. I can be a superhero. Look, and there's a reason why the guy from fucking Coldplay left her. Come on, let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> yeah. she just went cuckoo yeah. for Cocoa Puffs. I mean, really, she She's did. She so had to have gone crazy. She had to have. She had to have. Gone She's gone definitely crazy. lost the plot. Definitely, definitely. All right, let's move on to our last story. Okay, it all goes to the same place. Yeah, it all goes to the same place. Dude, when you're pissing in a sink, you're pissing in a sink. End of story. You will have it happen in every man's life where he feels it necessary to piss in a sink. Am I wrong or am I wrong? No, you are You are 100% correct yes. there. The worst part of it is getting your balls above the porcelain because That's the worst the... thing is like peeing with cold balls. Yes, so it is aggravating. awful. It is horrible. And the fact that M thinks that 
no other man in the world doesn't piss in the sink or the great John doesn't piss in the sink. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Your man's record, gross. Your man's have, gross just like all the other in, men. I have pissed in every drain in this house. There you go. Boom. Done deal. Here we go. That is really close to being disturbing, is all I'm saying. Yeah. That's pretty. No, what, what's, it's amazing how well pretty, the Super Mario theme yeah. Yeah. matches up with all of the points in that song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to fuck you like an animal, but Vice.com says nobody wants to talk about bestiality until someone fucks a horse. John. See, and we're proving that this is categorically untrue because we're talking about bestiality and to my knowledge neither of us have fucked a horse yet so not yet but i'm just saying like if there was an animal you you would want to fuck what would it be <sighs> that is a difficult question because you have to weigh the ability of the animal to damage you as part of the whole process versus i guess the enjoyment factor and size yeah so, Cause, and that leads uh, you, you know, to equal. I can't. I can't think of a decent sized animal. You can't uh, think like of maybe a like decent, a sheep or something. No, sheep is probably right about sheep is. I, the, I hear I from the Scottish and from the fucking what is it Welsh? There's there's a you know sheep buggering has a long and proud tradition. Yeah. Uh, among my ancestors, I hear it's pretty true. fucking close to being the real thing. I'm I'm willing to take that statement on faith. Well, on July 2nd, 2005, Kenneth Pia was dropped off by an unidentified man in the emergency room of the sleepy Inmuclaw Community Hospital. I think it's a numclaw. Num a numclaw? Like a like a Apache like chief from Super Friends. A numclaw! A numclaw! A numclaw! I call Captain Planet! In Claw <laughs> Community Hospital, about 25 miles outside of Tacoma, Washington. By the time the doctors reached him, he had died of a performant colon. When police... Oh, perforated. Per- it means it was punctured. Oh, That's a bad way to go, dude. Oh. When police began to investigate the death, the following trail of events had led Pena to the hospital that summer day they found themselves balls deep in a ring of bestiality <laughs> the likes of which washington state had never seen okay, i see what they did there yeah little, did little pun as it turns out pinya had sustained his injury while letting a horse have sex with his ass on a farm outside of in claw after tracking down the man who dropped off pinya at the hospital authorities found the searched uh, found and searched the farm where he sustained his injury and discovered a videotape of the act along with more than a hundred others depicting men having sex or receiving sex from various farm animals. Aside from horses, there were violations of goats, sheeps, chickens. Oh my! Chickens? <laughs> How? Chickens. No, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Move. <laughs> Keep going. Taken by a man named James Michael Tate. Oh, that's three. That's three names. Oh, that's not yep. good. That's not good. Weirdos lived, always have three names. Yeah, who lived nearby. Confronted with the sheer scale of the duration of the videos, police and reporters alike swallowed their discomfort and dived <sighs> into the world of zoophilia chat rooms mm. and websites. After a little digging, it became clear that Immuclaw Farm was known in the community as a major bestiality brothel. Brothel? But when police yeah, tried to charge... That should be a better t- name for that. <laughs> yeah, that should be like bestiality farm? Bestiality uh, uh, sanctuary? <laughs> what was it? I, I'll, I'll come up with something good. Give me a minute. Okay. I'll, I'll think of Uh... Uh, but when p- police try to charge Tate with a crime, they 
realized that Washington didn't have any laws on the books prohibiting the ungodly union between man and beast. The best they could tag him with was trespassing, the resulting in a year of probation, a $300 fine, and a day of community service. Okay, okay. So, is he trespassing in the horse? No, he's trespassing on the farm, evidently, because it wasn't his farm. Well, yeah, but if it's known as like a, a bestiality brothel, I would assume that he had permission to be there to get it on with the horse. Well, I mean, if the owner just goes, I, I ain't telling me he can come on here, you know, mm-hmm. be an easy way of saying, I, I didn't okay this. Yeah. His, his word versus mine, and I own the land. Yeah. And who's going to side with the horse fucker? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or goat or chicken. This is a tired story in America law. Over the past two decades, numerous of high-profile bestiality cases have popped up from state to state, and prosecutors have often found it is hard to prosecute them. In such as obscure crime uh, and a case like Emucla Farm, making it into the national spotlight is so rare that we have largely forgotten to legislate the matter. And often is that we're in the place that we're stricken from the books in 1970s when crimes against nature laws that have lumped bestiality into the consensual sex acts between adults and once labeled as illegal, like sodomy, were deleted wholesale because sodomy is either a blowjob or fucking fucking someone's chick in the ass or a dude in the ass. Uh, is it sodomy if it's if it's a man? Having sex with a woman's ass? It is. Is it still considered sodomy? Yep. Okay. In, so, in some states, it's considered sodomy if she gives you a blowjob. That does not seem correct. Sodomy in some states like Virginia and I think South Carolina is considered well, any... Everything's illegal in South Carolina. <laughs> well, moonshine's legal in South Carolina, so... Well... <laughs> Anything that's fun. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> sodomy is considered uh, any any unnatural hole that didn't, that does not denote uh, procreation. <laughs> so, so the definition of sodomy is any unnatural hole. Yeah, because I I was under the impression that it had to specifically be male on male action. To no, be considered no, it That's could be problems. male on female asshole, male on male mouth, female. I mean, male on female mouth. Female well, on female what? anything, male on male anything. I'm, I'm sitting here in the internet and I've got a VPN, so I'm going to just look up sodomy on the internet. Go for it. Many legislators assume that anti-animal cruelty laws can be used to prosecute BSLD, but that's far often not the case. Most of the flies, uh, most of it files under the radar, occurring, to in, uh, occurring in private homes and involves no prosecutable harm to the animals involved. And the cases involving sex with animals that are prosecuted you unusually occur quietly under other charges like trespassing or tampering with private property. Then an odd case catches a bit of media attention and prompts a law. The case that sparks the laws usually in, uh, tend to the sad rather than the absurd, like the case of a pit bull pup in North Carolina that died from internal injuries sustained from sex with a teenage boy, which prompted a local advocate to launch a nationwide campaign. That scenario has played out in a fair number of states and um, from 1999 until now. In Washington, a law was passed outlawing bestiality in all forms less than six months after Pinion's death. If you keep track, if you, if you're keeping track as of the last count in 2013 by Michigan State University College of College Law of Alabama, Colorado, Connecticut, DC, Hawaii, Kentucky, Louisiana, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, North Dakota, Ohio, Omaha, Texas, Vermont, West Virginia, and Wyoming still lack anti-bestiality laws. All of those states still lack anti-bestiality laws? I can can buy New Jersey not having anti-bestiality laws. (laughs) I can buy West Virginia, but Jesus Christ. West Virginia, I'm really surprised. I am Well, actually, no, I guess I'm not. West Virginia and Wyoming, North Dakota, these are the states that have the most fucking, fucking uh, d- d- stock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. But 
people in New Jersey are just weird. You know, yeah. in New Jersey, you're not allowed to pump your own gas. Correct. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Weird laws like so, that. So they're very they're they're like a home for weird laws. So I'm very surprised that you know they've never tackled bestiality. Well, it but seems the, like it's kind of a baseline. Like. Yeah. The Washington case is a little more complex, John. The scope of the operation, a brothel as opposed to a farm and his <laughs> farmer and his goat. The men involved, Pena, was seemingly well adjusted and well liked. Uh, Boeing and engineer uh, don't match up to the common patterns, narratives of bestiality. To complicate matters further, five years after the 2005 incident, a second animal brothel was discovered in Washington. That one in Wakecom County and in can uh on the Canadian boarding was based at an exit point Stallions Limited, a horse breeding company operated by one time cocaine smuggler Douglas Spike. Oh, Are you kidding me? <laughs> Police arrested Spike alongside with Welsh tourist Stephen Clark. Ah, <laughs> oh, the Welsh. Of course, the Welsh. When they found videos of the latter sexually abusing three dogs, also found were several mice with their tails cut off, covered in Vaseline with strings tied around them. Oh. Let that image sing in for a minute. Evidence later that emerged that showed sp Spink had been running a full-on brothel using dogs, horses, mice, and was produced, uh, producing hard copy, beast, hard copy bestiality porn, either as souvenirs or to get patrons warmed up, presumably. <coughs> there isn't a whole lot of experts on bestiality law in the United States, but there are a few tend to agree that mainly a, a solitary crime, most of these cases involve individuals, says Scott Heisner of Animal League Defense Fund. Criminal justice plan, uh, plan, especially juveniles who like to put these photos up on Facebook or to, and the internet. Who the fuck is putting yeah. a photo of yourself fucking your dog on goddamn Facebook? That is a really desperate cry for attention. Right oh there. my god, Jesus like, fucking Christ. How low do you have to sink to be like, oh, fuck the dog, check it out. <laughs> check it out, guys. <laughs> I stuck my dick in a dog. <laughs> it was awesome. You guys need to come over and try it. Alright, like, I know you had your issues in high school with, like, <laughs> people giving you shit for stupid things. Yeah. As many people do going through yeah, the American yeah, high school yeah, experience. Yeah. I don't understand. Like there is, there is nobody in high school that is bulletproof enough from criticism to post no. a video of them fucking a dog. No, on never. Oh my god, never. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, no. That seems like um, the worst possible thing that you could ever do as a teenager to like doc ensure that you would be completely untouched for the rest of your life. Well, Doctor Randall Lockwood, senior vice president of American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, forensic sciences and anti-cruelty projects adds the most often bestiality comes from a comes from bundle with some other offense like overt cruel, uh, cruelty it's uh, it's not a distorted of its it's not a distorter of its own he points out referring to bestiality status in DSM5 which classifies zoophilia as an unspecified sexual preference usually a component of a larger disorder the takeaway being that a lock, as Lockwood puts it, these aren't otherwise abstaining and loving spouses who are going out there getting their rocks off with animals, and it's certainly not a social crime. Heisner and Lockwood both point out that aside from the two Washington cases, every other rumored animal brothel they've ever heard of never materialized or turned out to be a hoax or urban legend. Sure, the occasional human brothel will pop up pimping out a few animals on the side, but that's rare and not quite the same. I don't like to discount people who suspect things, says Eisner, but since 2005 there have been no detected brothels that I know of other than Sphinx. In other words, it's not com it's not a community traditionally known for meeting up to aid and abet each other in a shared interest of fucking farm animals on film. 
The discreet, the, the discreet nature of bestiality can make the laws passed in a wake of high profile cases a little futile. If most people who are into sex, sexing up animals do it with their own pets or livestock in private without committing animal cruelty outright, then it's almost impossible to, to de detect the crime. And even if individuals are caught, the evidence disappears quickly, as Lockwood says Lockwood. Only in the past four or five years have vets learned an S in mass how to use rape kits on animals. Are you... What the fuck? Yeah, that's... What the fuck did I just read? I, I guess you, I, if you're a vet and you have an animal that comes into your care that you suspect might have sustained an injury from having sex with a human... Do you have to report that to a cop? Uh, I is guess that, you is do. That a thing that, is that a thing that vets do now or have to look out? I guess well, it is. Even when detected, judges tend to be uh, lamented and prosecutors pursue cases under under other parallel violations of the law that carry lower burden of proof. And some point out if there's no harm to the animals, then there's no reason to prosecute. Lockwood defends the value such as laws and prosecution of bestiality by pointing out that it's increasingly connected to academic literature to minds that are disturbed in more troubling ways. Just under 5% of child sex offenders, he says, openly admit to having relations with animals, and 30 to 40% appear to have engaged in bestiality when questioned on a polygraph. He also points out that common zoophilia defense that animals enjoy or do not mind sexual aggression is eerily reminiscent of pedophilia rhetoric. Yeah. In contrast to prevailing narrative, though, Pena was, by most accounts, an otherwise normal man. After his death, a documentary crew that started out with a critical stance on its issue produced Zoo, a 2007 film on Washington horse sex ring that took slightly positive approach to zoophilias and their culture. Pena's raised serious questions about the selection of bias involved in the common stories of bestiality, given that most literature comes from those who get caught, often as a result of their more or <laughs> overtilly devious actions it's hard to say anything comprehensive and certain about Zuvelia population at large and we are unlikely to learn anything more about it in the near future for now what we know is that washington is just weird it's often yeah, it's records great. highest bestiality rate in the u.s the oddity of the two aforementioned crimes aside granted that's the uh, that's just that's what gets gets caught washington may have just be a hyper vigilant uh, animal loving state but that bears the type of investigation that no one wants to do as it would involve trolling around bestiality chat rooms and whether yeah. inherit pathologically or not act or not the act still feels just too icky to touch so rather than some groundbreaking profile of the psychology of zoophilia is the next piece of news you're likely to hear about bestiality is the inevitable passage of Alabama's long delayed anti bestiality law, which should make it through the house later this year. That's from vice.com guys. Nobody wants to talk about bestiality until someone fucks a horse. That's, that's a fair statement. Well, my biggest thing is, yeah. okay, so my biggest thing is, is if animals could verbally talk, right? If animals could verbally consent and they consented that it was okay to have sex with them, would it be okay to have sex with them? <sighs> Probably. I mean, right. you have to get through all the questions of granting animals rights yeah. because they're sentient now and, and can handle Correct. communication. Correct. But let's but just say we got all that happens. Let's, all that happens. And animals yeah. can now, ver like you can verbally co communicate with animals and animals can verbally co communicate with consent. Would it be okay to have sex with your pet dog? Not my cup of tea, but. Apparently there are people for whom it is. So, okay, so then let me bring let me break this down to let me break this down to maybe not our cup of tea, obviously, but maybe a cup of tea that's closer to home, right? Obviously, for us, it's not okay to have sex with a dog because a dog cannot verbalize consent or cannot consent in general, does not under right. understand what consent is, right? Right. 
So let's say a brother and sister grow up separately, right? We talked about this a couple episodes ago. Okay. Okay. Let's say a brother and sister are adopt, put out for adoption. They get separated. And then magically they find each other on Tinder or whatever. Find each other attractive. And they start having a sexual relationship. What is wrong with that? Uh, consenting, up to the point consenting adults. Where they find out what's going on. Their, yeah. their, their connection to each other. Well, the, there the is example, wrong with the that. example that I use with that is the fact that we read a story that two adults found each other. They fell in love. They wanted to start having kids. They couldn't figure out why they couldn't have kids, or the why they were having trouble having kids because obviously they can have kids. Yeah, as a, as a, it was a man and a woman. They were trying to have kids. They went into research. They did a genetic test on them, and they found out that both of them were related. They were brother and sister that were adopted by two yeah. separate, completely families. My biggest thing is that Aunt has always had a problem with, and Wayne has always had a problem with. I don't have a problem with that. If they're two consenting adults and they have no idea that they're family, but even after they find out that they're related, if they're still attracted to each other and they still love each other, what's the problem? Well, I mean, they're not going to be able to have kids because I mean, obviously, you know, the, the, the genetics are too close. That's actually that's kids. actually a misconception. Really? Yes. It takes over at least two to three generations be, and that would be two to three inbred generations. So, in other words, their kids would have to marry their kids would have to marry their kids no, to thought, start. Well, isn't seeing... the incidence of inbreeding like way higher? Like if you were to if you were to have a child with a sibling, that's you would. That's that's you're, a, you're running a higher risk. You're running a higher risk of having wrong genetics. But we have people with wrong genetics now that's that still have kids. Well, I mean, like we're we're, we're talking about like you know actual deformities correct but we have people now that we test that that still try to have kids that have you know a 50 percent or higher guarantee that their kids will have deformities i guess i mean i i I see from the scientific point of Mm -hmm. things i see your argument but from the emotional and sociological point of things it's it's harder to say all right so like if you've got you got the brother and sister. They were, you know, both adopted, separated yep. at birth, had no yep. idea that they're brother yep. and sister. Yep. They get married um, at, say, age 25. Yep. And they live to be like 60, 70, and for whatever reason, never had kids, don't have any cause to get their genetic makeup mm-hmm. tested until they're 70 years old. They've been married for 45 years or 35 years, whatever the math is. And they find out at the end of 45 years that they have been brother and sister all this time 45 years in i can kind of understand the whole thing of like all right this is a huge psychological shock but maybe we'll just move forward with our relationship but if i'm dating somebody and we've been married for like a year or two and then we find out that we're brother and sister like me personally i'm gonna have a hard time walking back into the door in that relationship because ew i think you're gonna okay so it's the ick factor for you it's the ick factor. I it's get definitely that. The ick factor. I un- I completely understand that. I go with that. I concur. That's how I was raised. That's how you know I see my brother and sister. That's ew. That's all ew. Yeah. Said, fuck. Yeah. That's how I see all my family. Ew. Right. Yeah. But my big thing is that you know if they love each other, if they find an attraction to each other, who cares? Yeah, but like, like you have to go through at least two or three uh, generations to see some type of distortion in the genetic field. What's the likelihood of their family? I mean, other than being forced, which does happen. We know this happens. We know it happens with some um, uh, yeah. former, you know, king and queens to keep in the family. Some, yeah. you know, some historian um, back in the day in farms when the farms were alone, when they were on like, you know, 800 or 200 or whatever acres. They used to try to keep making sure the the land would stay with the family so they would marry each other. You know, all that stuff. I get that. That's the ooh factor. That's the forced relationship factor. But if you're not forced and there's nothing to it, what's it? What's it like? What's it? And granted, you weren't grown up to it. But, you know, going past the brother and sister thing, like the mom and son thing or the dad and daughter thing or the dad and the dad and something. That's a forced relationship. 
Yeah, in, incest pretty much of any kind is going to be right out, right off the books for me. Right? Absolutely, There's, I agree. I agree. No, but I just, yeah, but, I but just don't see a problem with it. If if your two adopted kids, a brother yeah. and a sister, you find out as adults who have never met each other, fall in love with each other, and start trying to have kids with each other, that you are brother and sister. As a brother and sister, you guys are committing incest. Like that's dictionary definition. Yeah, incest. Yeah, yeah. Technically, you are and, con- committing incest, but I just and, don't see a problem with it if you never grew up together, if you never have that, if you don't have that ooh factor, ew factor, and it's consensual sex between both of you. I don't well, have a problem. With incest, that. I think, is illegal pretty much in every book everywhere. With yeah, the exception abso- of maybe a absolutely. Of countries I, exactly. That this is exactly. This is. I mean, obviously, this is illegal. Obviously, but I'm just. Yeah. I'm. Th- I'm throwing out the morality of it, and the morality just, of it to me, it like the day to day nitty gritty of correct. two people, that are correct. brother and sister living together, having correct. sex. Correct. 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 It's still ill to me. I can't. I can't. No, I agree. I agree. I don't disagree no, like, with your sentiment. I'm looking at it as far as the. The logical aspect of it, as far as, you know, if they don't know their brother and sister and they meet and they find each other attractive and, you know, they didn't get raised together because that's what really brings it together. It's the being raised together is the most of all thing, especially if you're raised. Well, I mean, that's being raised right together. Let's say that. Yeah. (laughs) Because if you're raised wrong together, you're going to find your sister attractive, obviously. Yeah. You know, but But going back to bestiality, it's I mean, to me, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. If if animals could consent, to me, I think that would be okay. Honestly, I think it would be okay if they can consent. If they're consenting right. adult animals that, I mean, in a fantasy world, that can, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, in a fantasy so, land that can consent. So we're going into Dungeons and Dragons. Correct. Correct. Exactly. If you're a minotaur and, and, and you want to have sex yeah. with an elf and you can consent, then you should be able to have sex with an elf. It's okay. I don't have that's, a problem with that. That, but yeah, that's, granted, that's fair. I can these, I get behind that. This person that got perforated by a fucking horse's cock obviously should not be having sex with a horse. Obviously. Well, and and you know the the physical and and genetic dangers are the things that, from a scientific viewpoint, I look at these kind of situations. And go, no, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. Yeah. Because you know if 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 you absolutely positively must have sex with a horse, have sex with the horse yourself. Don't let the horse have sex with you. That just seems like a no brainer. I agree. Um, I sincerely agree with that. I 100% fucking agree with that. You know, don't, don't have sex with an animal that yes. could potentially kill you with yes. ease. Like yes. it doesn't seem like a smart thing to do. Cause I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's sex. We've all had sex and had the unfortunate mishap where like you're, you're into it and you're doing something. And then one of you moves the wrong way. And all of a sudden it hurts. Like with a human being, it's like, oops, my bad. Sorry. Let's go back to having <laughs> exactly. fun with an animal. It's like, you hurt me, strange thing. And then the next thing you know, you've got a hoof through your head. Exactly. You know, and, and your head exactly. is a caved in watermelon. Doesn't seem like a good <laughs> No, idea. it doesn't seem like right to me. And then the words. are talking about like, like the, the, the fantasy version of this where it's like we live in a world yes. where animals can talk and, and are sentient and give their consent. Like, uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's not your thing, but still. I mean, as as long as everybody is consenting, correct, and there's there's enough sentience involved to actually be able to yep. consent and mean it, and not just be saying a word that you don't understand. I guess why not? Like yeah, why not? I I, I, I don't really. <laughs> As long there's, as there's nothing sit, there that like, I can hang my head can, on to go like that's wrong. Correct, don't do it. So correct, exactly, exactly. I guess don't. I guess have fun. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's not our. It's not. It's not. It's none of my fucking business. Essentially. But that said, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do my thing. You can animals. do your thing. But actual animals in the reality we live with cannot give they, consent. So don't fuck them and don't let them no, fuck you. No. Yeah. And and it just doesn't seem like. I agree. I I don't know if I was if I was a bestiality guy that I would use that as my, my legal <laughs> sure. defense to get out of it. No, definitely not. You know, if this I would, was I would a different, more like, okay. If this was a different world, everything, yeah. me and me and Pony, me and Pony would be happy. Well, I mean, like you, as an animal owner, you can tell when your dog is happy and when Correct. your dog is not happy. Correct. So, you know, as somebody, if you're a person that gets it on with animals, I would assume that you'd have at least a couple of, you know, reference points 
to understand whether the animal that you're having sex with is into it or is not into it. Well, that's their big thing and, is that the fact that they, you know, one of their defenses is the fact that they know their animal and that their animal yeah, loves what yeah. they do. But and their that animal doesn't seem still, like a good defense to it me. It still can't give consent. If it can't not give consent, it's not okay. It's just well, not. See, my thing is like, if I'm a guy accused of bestiality and I am actually practicing bestiality and want to make a defense for bestiality, <laughs> I would be saying more like I'd be taking the animal husbandry tack. Yes. Where it's like these are animals we eat. These are animals we use as beast of burden. I, We're better than them. I, so whatever I do to it doesn't matter. It's my thing. Correct. Which seems like the smarter way to go in, in making that argument. I but, think so, too. I do. I yeah, really I do think so, too. I really do. So anyway, in the words of um, you know Steve Steve Irwin, Steve Irwin being being a man of of, of beasts and burdens, Steve Irwin died the way he lived with an animal in his heart. Yep. Did you hear uh, Steve brought in, uh, Steve Irwin brought us a, a, a Corvette Stingray? No. Oh, Stingray Corvette. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He keeps it real close to his heart. <laughs> Does he? Where else in Wales can you get but I butchered can, that joke? I'm sorry. Yeah, you did. Where else in Wales can you get can you get a fuck, a nice warm coat, and a casserole all on the same date? Uh, I gotta go take a shower now. Like I feel filthy having this. I had some luck on horses today. The farmer went outside, so I crept in the stable and fondled them all day. You're you're a bad person, and you should be stopped. <laughs> that was satire for this week, everybody. <laughs> Facebook.com slash cerebral satire for all your fucking complaints that you're going to have on this episode. And your animal fucking complaints, yeah. especially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us if you fondle your animals. We like to we like to hear it. Don't. Uh, don't. <laughs> don't tell them. At cerebral keep satire. It, keep hashtag. it deep down in your soul. <laughs> hashtag C satire for, uh, for anything we want to see. Uh, if you fondle your little puppy or whatever, just let us know on Twitter so we can report you to proper authorities. At Cerebral Satire at gmail.com for um, Cerebral Satire at gmail.com for anything you want to secretly tell us or email us or send us a voicemail whenever you'd like. And that was it for this week. Say goodbye, John. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Have a great week. So let them all kill each other And get it made overseas That's the word, don't you know From the guys that's running the show Let's be perfectly clear, boys and girls Oh, cunts are still running the world I still run in the world oh, yeah. I am never going to be clean again <laughs> we, we need to really do a joke episode one time <laughs> so that it's actually funny instead of doing joke. a serious serious show we really need to do a fucking fun show one year <laughs> we decided because uh, there's a, a bunch of friends of mine we do trivia every night or every week on thursday nights and um we decided one day that if we just have you know a really bad night at trivia where we're just getting every answer wrong we're just gonna go because our team name is suck at trebek <laughs> so we're gonna we're, we're gonna officially change our team name to turd ferguson and make the trivia hosts like call us that and then just start putting in bullshit answers for every question <laughs> just because made there's up no bullshit. Hope even if you know yeah. it just make it up yeah yeah just and, and you you definitely need to do it a, a podcast equivalent of that <laughs> well we're working on it thank you for joining us this week john have a great week you too <laughs>